Hey guys, Louie here. Um, I just wanted to say hi and give you some thoughts I was having about uh, the market and um, also the big, the thing, you know, the Wu-Tang Clan thing. Um, so uh, the market today was really, really hammered down and people say it had to do with um, the market being less worried about uh, global pandemic. Um, but I don't think that was it at all. That, that just looked completely abnormal um, and out of sync with the rest of precious metals. And, uh, you know, interest rates have been dropping like crazy. They go back up a teeny, teeny basis point or two. Um, that wasn't enough to do it. And it's not like the dollar, um, you know, was getting really strong or something. So um, it just was completely out of character and it was really large and it made me think that it's a market manipulation, uh, probably by traders. Maybe, maybe things are falling apart in China. Maybe people were taking money off the table. Um, you know, uh, if you're heavily invested in the market and it starts to plummet and you got margin, uh, you may have some conservative bets on gold and silver and whatnot, um, or Bitcoin or who knows. And when they start making margin calls, um, you know, you're going to sell anything you need to. I think, uh, you know, some people are paying some uh, taxes at this time of year as well. But uh, it felt very abnormal. It felt, felt very manipulated. Um, so that's all I'll say about that. I still think it's a great buying opportunity. But it is extremely frustrating uh, when you're fully invested in metals, you know, when you've reached your limit, which I should think should be about 10% of your assets, and you can't buy any more. Oh my God, that just makes me so crazy. But uh, nonetheless, uh, that's where I am. I'm Pat right now. Um, so I hope you'll hang in there. You know, it's, it's coming. Don't worry. Um, in regard to uh, the virus that uh, is uh, definitely increasing uh, somewhat exponentially, um, you know, have you watched the Simpsons movie? Okay. Um, you know, the one where Springfield pollutes, you know, the world and then they decide they have to put a dome around it. And, uh, you know, cause they have to, they have to completely, uh, segregate, um, Springfield. Uh, matter of fact, I have a little something on my arm here that, uh, is from that movie, uh, as an aside, it's one of my favorite movies, and my daughter has um, has the Bart side, um, so that's a father-daughter tattoo. But speaking of domes, okay, uh, Wu-Tang Clan has got a giant invisible dome all around it. Um, I forget if they said, oh my God, how many million people, half a million people, or something like that. But, uh, you know, they're not letting them out and they're probably limiting what they bring in as well. And if you think that couldn't happen in America, um, well, wrong. That could totally happen here. We are just as lackadaisical at prevention of stuff like this and early detection and eradication, um, you know, as the Chinese or the Canadians or anybody. We, we like to wait around and see what happens and then go back and try to fix it after it does. Um, we're not really proactive, in my opinion, of, uh, of capturing these kinds of things. And uh, I mean, just look at the AIDS epidemic and you can see how, you know, complicit the government is in not doing their job. But I'm going back quite a few years on that one. But anyway, you know, imagine the dome coming down around, uh, you know, um, Tucson, Arizona. There's a dome and you can't, you can't leave and you may or may not be able to go to work. You probably can't. Um, you know, if money stops rolling in, the grocery store isn't stocked as well. And uh, God forbid you get sick and you have to worry about your family and uh, maybe somebody who's older or younger or pregnant. Um, so, you know, now I think is a great time to think about prevention, which, uh, you know, a lot of this when it comes here is going to be uh, spread by touch, right? Because it, it's, uh, it's likely living on, on uh, shiny surfaces and glasses and chrome and... Uh, and floors and spoons and dishes and doorknobs and toilet seats. 
So, you know, what you touch, uh, because you touch your face like 99 times a day, what you touch um, will infect you. So I would encourage you to think about um, how freely you touch things in your environment or get close to other people. Um, currently, uh, you know, it, it seems to have a pretty long, long incubation period where people are asymptomatic. And um, because of that, they travel freely and they may or may not be infectious. No reason to think they're not. Um, so, um, you know, people who have it right now could be traveling around and, you know, uh, if the Chinese can double their infected in one day, uh, what, is, what does that take about a month to reach the entire population of the globe? Not that I'm predicting that, but so be careful what you touch, right? Consider putting barriers between you and what you touch. Don't get too close to uh, co-workers and uh, mall employees and fast food workers and whatnot. Um, if you want to wear a mask, I guess that's up to you. You know, eventually uh, we may be sending our kids to school in masks um, because, you know, when something hits a school, it gets crazy real fast. So uh, I, hope, I hope it doesn't come here in earnest, but I suspect the genie is out of the bottle and we're going to see whatever we're going to see and uh, hopefully it'll be stomped out as quickly as the Ebola thing was. But it looks a lot more like SARS than it does Ebola. Uh, anyway, so hang in there um, and uh, hang on to your silver and put some supplies away and some money away and maybe a little gold away and uh, hope you ride the thing out well. I'm sure, I'm sure everybody will be all right, but just in case, protect yourself. All right, guys, Louis signing out. Have a good week.